All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to make a couple short YouTube videos to uh, explain the technique that I use to convert the uh, free wing T33 into turbine. In my opinion, it's a super simple conversion. I've done four. This has been the easiest one yet. Um, basically, we're going to talk about the wing here first. Um, it comes with these connectors right here to mount the uh, ribbon wire. Those have to go because you need that real estate for the uh, tank. Um, I prefer to uh, just take the existing wires, solder on a lead and make a Y right here, rather than having all the connectors bundled up in here. Uh, it's a neater installation and it does get a little bit tight right in through there because this basically is is like the position of the tank right about there. Um, that's my personal preference. I like to uh, I'll wire together the uh, ailerons and the gear. Uh, I'll, I like a separate channel for each flap. It's in my opinion, it's easier to adjust. And uh, I bring the uh, the wires for the brakes out here too. Those are these right here. Um, talking about the brakes. Super, super simple. These are the uh, JP 65 millimeters. If you buy them set up for the four millimeter axle, I mean, it's just to undo a set screw, take the uh, free wing one out, slide in the uh, JP, super simple. The only thing you gotta do is you just gotta move the slot over for the set screw ever so slightly right here. The axle sticks out. Plus you gotta, do a little uh, modification right here on the gear door that gives the wire kind of room to flex on both sides. And then to route the wire, I just went around the uh, retract unit, made the slot a little wider here. There was enough room in the slot here, and then I just poked them down with the um, other wires. Super, super simple. Um, you gotta kind of watch here the uh, when the retract moves. You might have to adjust your uh, the amount of slack you have in this area. Uh, the gear do not want to go all the way in um, if there is you know some binding with the wire. So you just gotta watch that area here. And uh, while we're on the note of the gear, um, the only rule of, rule of flaw that I found with the free wing is. Uh, some of them, the, uh, the gear's not uh, bonded in very well. So give yours a tug. If it comes out, take it out, glue it back in right. Um, I think they fixed it on the uh, second batch, but the first batch, every one I've known, the gear has come out very cleanly, like there's no glue on it. Um, so basically, this is all I'm gonna talk about with the wing tonight. Um, there will be, on the next video, I'm gonna show you after we get the tank somewhat located, we're gonna make a um, like a custom fiberglass cradle back here that bonds to the wing that will keep the tank from sliding aft. Uh, but first we gotta locate the tank and uh, that's what we're gonna do next. So the next video I do, maybe in a week or so, we'll show you how to make the, uh, the cradle and bond it to the wing. All right, so we're gonna come over here and uh, talk about the fuselage. Oh, before I do that, let's talk about the uh, clunk arrangement in the, in the tank that I provide. Um, my personal preference, a lot of guys like the metal fittings, plastic fittings. I like the plastic ones. It's taking the regular Dubro um, or a stopper that's meant for gasoline Jet A and um, I cut it down a little bit. That way the stopper or the uh, the keeper here is not bottomed out against the aluminum fitting. The rubber is mounted directly up against the uh, the fitting. So I just take a, a Dremel tool and I cut about an eighth inch off of this fitting here. So you have a gap and it works out perfect. Here's, a, uh, here's one that is not installed in the tank. Um, once again, the regular Dubro stopper. These are Sullivan caps here. I don't know. I don't know if Sullivan even makes tanks anymore. I just had them laying around. Um, I'm using the uh, 
Pro, uh, it's a Sullivan Pro Flex fuel line. It's the most flexible line I've ever seen. It's the large, also a Dubro heavy clunk. Um, I just run a piece of 532nd brass tubing here with, um, I, I like these fittings here. I silver solder, oh, here it is. I silver solder these onto the end of the uh, tube right there. It always makes a really good fitting. Um, safety wire them. And uh, on the extra hole here, I just run a run a piece of music wire, anything that's eighth inch, um, it works fine. Uh, just to pretty much plug up the hole. And then on the third hole, there's not a hole through the stopper, so I don't even worry about it. I just tighten the screw down and um, it seems to work really good. Um, it, it is a little tight in the fittings, but you know, you know a single drop of uh, turbine oil down through here, I mean, it will just slide right on and create a really good seal. And when you tighten up the screw, the uh, stopper will kind of conform around to the outside and um, it works fine. Just once you're done with a setup like this, um, immerse it in a bucket of water, put your finger over the, the vent, blow through here, and just leak check everything before you permanently mount it inside the model. Okay, and then, you know, just make sure, you know, with the Sullivan uh, tubing here, just make sure that the clunk rattles all over. I mean, I haven't had any troubles. Works out really good. It's like a sump down in here, and uh, you can pretty much use every last drop of fuel. The vent curls up into the top here. And I mean, I haven't had any issues. You can fill the whole tank with full, uh, full of fuel, very little air. So this is kind of what it looks like, right like that. And I just kept these bonded in with a uh, high saw and uh, really the tanks have been working out really well. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, fuselage. Um, this is pretty much how it comes. Um, the spike, inlet spike here, it gets cut right along the surface here and just project a straight line down. Um, the glue they use really doesn't bite in too well. So I just pretty much pinch it together and it breaks the glue joint. Um, if it needs a little help, just go in here with a little exacto knife and uh, help it out. Um, the way I go about there's very little foam removal to do, so the way I do it is, let me find the right tank. Okay. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, basically, you just wanna, you, the tank needs to set a little bit lower, and you need to kinda conform the front here to the shape of the tank. So what I do is, I use just a regular piece of carbon paper, nothing fancy. Um, I stick it on here, I, I jiggle the tank around, slide it back and forth, and it's going to leave an impression wherever it's hitting. So it's hitting right there, there, and a little bit on the sides. So I just go in there with uh, some sandpaper or whatever you got, and uh, you pretty much just take the black lines off. You're going to be doing this probably, you know, 20, 30 times to try to get it fitting as nice as you can. And we'll take a little bit off here. Okay, so got that off. So then you go in here and you just look at, you know, it's starting to come in there. And uh, I'll show you over there the uh, actual finished location. But the area where the wires are gonna run from the wing into the fuselage it's going to be right through here. So you're going to want to kind of bevel this area in through here a little bit. This, you're going to bevel that so the wires will slide in. Um, you know, the carbon paper works great because normally you don't know where to sand. You're kind of guessing. But you just look for the black areas and you... Uh, or if it's leaving a black mark, you just sand it off and just keep fitting. I mean, there's not a lot of foam to remove. Um, if you look over on the, the one that I'm flying now, 
Um, you know, I took my time. I mean, it, the tank contours in really nice with the foam. Um, you just take your time. And as far as the height location, you want the top of this just ever so slightly uh, above the surface right here. That, that's a good height. And then after you got it to where you think it's a good location, go ahead and stick the wing on. Make sure the wing's not hitting any, any part of the tank. And then it'll be ready for this receptacle that we're going to make. Well, that'll be on the next video. So basically the tank, it can't go up because it's against the fuselage. It can't go forward because it's against the fuselage here. The only thing we've really got to control is the, uh, the aft mounting here. And the, the wires and all that right here pretty much keep it from coming down. Um, what else? Uh, and then in the next video, we'll also talk about, um, we're going to insert some plywood along here. We're going to cut uh, a groove to mount rails for the turbine and the tailpipe to mount on. Um, now we're going to talk about the UAT mounting here. Uh, um, you guys running the uh, the K45s over the X45s, the mounts are a little bit wider, so you're going to have to do something a little different in this area here. It, it is doable. We'll talk about that next week. And the guys running the, uh, the K45s, the computer on that engine is mount, not mounted under the front cover like the X45. So the K45, you have to have the computer up front. And one hard thing about this model, it does get a little bit tight up front. You got to be very organized or you're going to run out of real estate. So the guys running the K45s, I recommend mounting your UAT all the way to one side of these rails if you can. And I think that's going to leave room for your come up the computer to mount along the side here. Um, the X45 just has a little junction board. It's no problem. It just tucks along the side here. So I just mount the UAT right in the middle. And uh, free wing, you know, maybe they thought of this, but uh, they have a perfect cavern down in here for the UAT to mount. Um, it's just the foam you have to remove is it's basically just about 5 16 inch thick right in through there. Um, there's like a, this is solid foam in this area here, so don't go any further aft than that. Um, there's a, um, it's, it's solid foam here, and then there's like a, um, a web on both sides there. And uh, just kind of stay away from that. But uh, on the, the, my prototype, I mounted the UAT just like that. Works perfect. Uh, next week, I'll show you when we do a fiberglass layup for the tank. We're gonna make a little layup around here to mount the UAT. It's it's nothing special, but it, it works very well. Um, so basically, that's that's the fuselage for right now. Just take your time, fit in the tank. You're, you'll start to develop a, the curvatures around here for the tank to fit. You know, it's starting to come in right now. I've only worked on this one, you know, just you know five ten minutes, and once again. This part right here should be ever so slightly about 330 seconds above the surface right here. And then that'll give you a little bit. Of, this is where your wires are going to come through right here. So, you know, that's another reason I don't like all those uh, black plastic servo connectors right there because it, it gets very crowded down in this area. So I like to just um, solder in a wire harness and uh, I'm done. That, but if you ever have to replace a servo, you'll just have to cut the wire and uh, re-solder it. Okay, so um, that's it for the fuselage here. Um, we're going to talk about now um, the pipe. Let me get rid of this thing here. All right, the pipe I use, it's a, um, everything's custom made here. It's a um, 6,000 stainless inner wall. Uh, the outside is um, uh, probably about 7,000 aluminum. 
It's uh, very similar to the technique that um, Grumania used to do on their pipes. They got them a little bit fancier. If there's no welding involved, it's uh, it's like a, a, a crimped version. I mean, my prototype has roughly, I'd say 25, 30 flights on it, has given me no issues of wearing at all. So it's basically just bolted together. And um, the way it works, it's the, the metal is like folded in like that. And uh, it seems to be working out great. Um, we made up a composite um, uh, little cone here the right size, Grumania's intermediate pipe. It's just a little bit too big to fit in the 80 millimeter models. So I made up the one where it fits really nice. And uh, while we're talking about the bell mount there, one thing I recommend doing is uh, you want to sand uh, some of these ridges away here too uh, that are meant for the, uh, the EDF. Just transition these nice and smooth. You, You'll leave the ridge right here in the middle, but you'll, you'll take away some of this bulk here because that'll just give you a little bit more of, uh, of room for, for airflow to go around the, uh, the bell mount. And while we're talking about this here, this used to be permanently mounted to the uh, model. If you leave it there, you're gonna play hell trying to get the engine and tailpipe mounted. So, it comes off real easy. Um, I just go in there and kind of cut the glue joint with an X-Acto knife. Once again, their glue really doesn't bite into the foam too well. So I just pop it off and basically you pull the glue away. Now this piece will be permanently glued to the EDF hatch eventually. And uh, we'll make some straps that go up here that mount this to the wing. Works out great, gives you all types of access. Very easy to change the engine and to get the tailpipe in. Because the EDF, well, the tailpipe's gonna mount roughly in this neighborhood right here after we get the engine in. So the engine mounts and the uh, tailpipe mount will be in this area here. And that would be right below that. So it's just as easy to take this out and glue this on here. Um, now we're going to talk about mounting the, uh, the way I like to mount the pipe in the model is I like to bond on, let me get this junk out of here. I like to bond on aluminum tabs to the, uh, to the bell mouth here. And uh, I'm going to show you how I go about that doing this. Every model I've ever done it this way, I mean, it has worked awesome. So basically what I do is I just take a flat surface, I draw a compass circle, just a little bit bigger than the diameter of the bell mouth, and I draw a line directly through the middle of the, the center here. And basically that's gonna be the center line of the uh, tabs that mount the tailpipe. So, I like to have the seam on the top of the model so you're not looking at it all the time. I center the, uh, oh, and I just put clear tape on the board here so uh, if any glue does ooze out, it doesn't, everything doesn't bond together, it just pops right off of the packing tape. So I just center the, uh, the pipe up in the middle of my circle since I drew the uh, line just a little bit big. Then I'm just gonna tap it down just with a little bit of hot glue so it's, it's not sliding all over the place while we're uh, trying to bond these on. Just a couple little tacks. And then I did roughen up the um, surfaces here with a um, Oh, some 60 grit or something, solvent wiped it. And uh, I take the aluminum tabs here, I scuff them up with um, oh, 60 grit also. And you might have to adjust the angle. Oh, shoot, there you go. You might have to adjust the angle a little bit. Why don't you come around here? Because when you bond them on, you're gonna want the top of that tab to be right on that line. Okay, and that's going to center up the uh, the pipe, um, basically the center line. 
Um, I leave these long here. Um, I'm gonna just lop these off after they're bonded on. And then I leave enough room on these to install like two fasteners after, we're gonna put one right there and one right there after they're, are, they're bonded on. Um, so I'm gonna just bond these on real quick. I like the JB Weld, it's a um, strong epoxy and it, it acts like a, a liquid shim too because I got a gap right here that I wanna fill up. I don't want a gap there when I draw on a fastener, it's just gonna suck it up. So um, I'm just real quick, we're just gonna mix on some JB Weld. Don't use the quick stuff, use the slow drying stuff. this up here. All right, so my pipe is pretty much centered. So now one side is going to need a little bit more glue than the other side, so I'm going to load this side up pretty good. Not so much down there. All right, now we're going to put it on there. Okay, I got it pretty much right on my line. Basically walk away from that, so... And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, that's good. We're gonna just set that aside, let it dry. We're gonna to stick two fasteners in after it's all bonded in and uh, we'll go from there. Um, pipe's been working out great, I'm really happy with them. Um, other than that, I think that's about all I'm gonna to cover tonight. Um, so next time we'll mount the, uh, on video number two, we're gonna do the fiberglass layup over the end of the tank. Once the tank is located, um, we're gonna show you how I cut the slots in for the uh, engine mounts and um, tailpipe. And we'll maybe, oh, we'll also do a mount on the UAT. Other than that, I mean, it's a super simple um, um, conversion. The hardest part is keeping everything neat up in here. Um, I, like to, I like to mount the receiver right here. That way you have all the radio you know, components as far aft as possible, neat and out of your way. And it gives you a lot of room for everything else. Um, I mount both batteries up front here. Uh, the CG works out great. Um, and, you know, you just need room, you know, to get in here and connect the batteries. You know, you need a room for your fill line here. So your goal basically and the end of the completion is just to keep everything as neat as, as possible up front. Other than that, it's super simple. Oh, and I uh, forgot to mention the, um, if, you, if you're gonna use the JP brakes, don't even waste your time using the uh, JP controller. Go out and get the Zykoi brake controller. It works fine. It's like a pulsating action. You got like five different settings. It's like anti-lock brakes. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. Okay, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, maybe put another one out in a week. All right, thank you.